I really wanted to work again with an extraordinary person who has been one of my uh, spiritual guidance counselors really helped me to see the world in a different way and really helped me to bring about my own uh, true colors while also checking me in a little bit. Yeah, yeah checking, making sure I'm, uh, I'm on the right uh, path and all that. So, uh, and Mythica is, in, is on her own journey too to find some new authentic things that she wants to do because it's wonderful when you have a talent and you're known for something and you're doing something, but then all of a sudden there's that shift where you realize, wait, there could be something more. And Mythica has decided to start a public speaking career uh, here with us today. So I want you to all give a round of applause. Come on up here, man. To Mythica Von Griffin. Um, my name is Mythica Von Griffin, and for those of you who don't know me, um, how many of you have Netflix? Raise your hand. Okay, almost every single person in the room. So I am on a television show called Skin Wars. It's the first body painting reality TV show, and I am on season one. So you can see me there. You can actually see one of my worst moments in my entire life <laughs> is in season one, episode four. I'm not telling you the minute, you can, you're just gonna have to watch it. But uh, today I'm going to talk to you about the power of self-image and self-esteem. Why is this important? Well, it's great to be authentic and it is wonderful to get in your body, and your body can certainly be a, a gateway to get to those things, absolutely. But there's two things that happen. There's what other people project on us, which Lilia talked on a little bit, you know, how people see her as a dancer and say, what great posture, right? Um, and then there's what we think about ourselves, right? When people go into job interviews or you go in to do sales pitches or whatever it is your business is, you walk into the room and in the first 10 seconds, it's already decided before you even say a word. How many of you have heard that statistic before? Right? So how do you do that? How are you communicating that your marriage is falling apart? when you walked into the room? How are you communicating that you just failed the real estate exam to get in for the third time? I did that, right? By four questions, three times. <laughs> Faith and I have similar stories, <laughs> right? And then you try to go in and you're like, hi. I'm so excited to be here. And they're like, oh my God, she has no confidence. No, no, we'll just do the rest of the interview, right? So that is when your self-image is being projected into the moment. So even though you may believe in your product, you may believe in your service, whatever it is that you believe in, that's fantastic. Your product is fantastic. Your service is fantastic. But without your self-esteem, without your ability to connect to yourself that you actually love and care about yourself, then that love and care for the other person doesn't physiologically connect, you know, on an energetic level. So I kind of gave this example the other day. It's like, hi, um, can I body paint you? Right? And you're like, uh, I'm not really sure. You know, right? And that's when you, that fear, right, is inside of you and you're trying to do your thing. Yeah, thank you. Blue light be gone. Boof. Um, that's when you're trying to, you know, you can feel that, right? You can feel that nervousness. You don't want to necessarily sell that thing, right? Now, let's say you really believe in your product. You really believe in your service, right? But your self-esteem is an the right place. Your self-image is in the right place. I do body painting. It is an amazing thing and you really want it. How many of you really want it, right? 
right? Here's the thing. Now here's where all those things come together, right? Your belief in your product and your service, okay? You have the, the, the authenticity, right? So all of these things that we've been talking about are building up, right? You're in your body. You're in the present moment. But now your self-worth, your self-image, and the service that you're projecting all come together. Hi. I'm a body painter. And I know that when you walk out of the shower and you look at yourself in the morning, and you are nitpicking at your body, that you don't want to do that anymore. I want to paint you so that you never have to do that again. Can I paint you? Right? I forgot myself. I don't care about myself. All I care about is you and where you want to be in your life, and I am here to serve you. My authenticity, my purpose, and my self-image are all aligned. And is that, that's where the power is. Did you feel it? Right? It's different. You forgot the room went away for half a second. You leaned forward, didn't you? It got serious. Did you hear how quiet it got in the room? How, raise your hand if you noticed how quiet it got in the room. Right? That's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. All right, so we've talked about it a little bit that way. Let me show you a little step further. Chessa, will you step up, please? So how many of you have heard of a woman by the name of Brene Brown? She's a very famous speaker on TEDx. Brene talks about the power of vulnerability. Um, she's, I'm going to have you stand right over here. So there's a lot of people that talk about vulnerability, right? Vulnerability is necessary for connection. It is necessary in order for you to be like, this is my product, this is my service, and I believe, honestly, 100%, that there's no one else who can serve you as well as I can. That's being vulnerable, right? But that's all conceptual. Let me show you actual vulnerability. This, this is your part. Everyone, this is Chessa. Before she, before she does anything else, can you please give her a round of applause for being my mother? Strip. Oh. <laughs> this is the part where you take your clothes off. Now, I, I, I kind of bill myself as, as being the most unique um, keynote speech in America, and I promise that I will keep my audience from falling asleep. I'm going to bring a half-naked girl. <laughs> I swear to God, it'll keep your attention. Um, Chessa has never been body painted before. Before this morning, she has never in person met me. I put out a call, and I asked for somebody to be painted in front of a room full of strangers. And she showed up. Now, here's the thing, right? And we're going to talk about those two things. What other people project on you and what you, you project outside, right? So there's a lot of women that are in the room, so, um, uh, and men as well, right? So this is an entire conversation about what we project on other people. So... Here's the thing, Chess is a young, healthy, good-looking girl, you know, and what sorts of things do you project on her? Like, how do you see her right now? Physically. Beautiful. Beautiful. What else? Vulnerable. Okay, what else? Nervous. Nervous. Thanks, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, right? <laughs> Brave. Right? Okay. Yeah, so how do you compare yourself to her? <gasps> right? You feel, oh, no, that's, that's good. That's good, right? How do, do you like, she's just, how many of you think she's just like me? Just show of hands. She's just like me. Raise your hand. 
Okay, let me ask this question. How many of you are human? Raise your hand. Is she just like you? Okay. Here's the thing. You are projecting onto her. She's young. I'm not young. You're projecting onto her. She's cute. I'm not cute. You're projecting onto her. She's beautiful. I'm not beautiful. You're projecting onto her. She's brave. I'm scared shitless. Excuse my French, but it's true. Okay. Chessa, tell them how you feel about yourself. Um, so with myself, <laughs> I've struggled a lot with my body physically on a level and um, it's going to be so hard. It's okay. It's all right. You're no different. Go ahead. I recently broke off an engagement less than a hundred days away from my wedding. I was dating a man who I was convinced loved me, but would still stand there and tell me that I would never find someone who would love me as much as he did, and not in a loving way. Um, I listened to people tell me that I should eat more, or that I should love myself the way that I am and not change anything. Um, I've been told many things that most people wouldn't believe, like I should eat a cheeseburger, which I believe is just as hurtful as calling someone fat. And for once, I just want to be myself and love myself. And if I want to lose weight, then I want to do that for me. And I want to do any change that I make for myself and not because society told me to do it or because it's the image that everyone is projecting on me or it's because people think that I am confident because they are wrong. I wake up every morning and eat myself alive in the mirror and I am ready to stop doing that. Okay, now after hearing her share her very vulnerable and authentic self from the words and things that she said how many of you can now really relate to her okay every hand in the room went up when i first told you if you could relate to her no hand went up now that she's told you her story and what it's like inside to be here every day how many of you are like her every person in the room okay so here's the thing you are projecting that onto your clients you are projecting that onto your employees you are projecting that onto yourself you are projecting that onto everybody in your life but the person that you're projecting it the most onto is the one who's in the mirror every single day okay so no, that's a good job. I'm going to have you stick it into that hand because I'm going to paint from Sorry. this side. You're still going to face them, you know. Okay. So you're going to, hi, live, hi, hi, people over there, hi, people in the middle, right? So we're kind of like, do this in the room, right? All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right? That was kind of intense, wasn't it? Who thinks that was a little intense? Raise your hand. Okay, all right. So, what is my mission? My mission is to change the way people see themselves in the mirror. When you come into creating your purpose story and what you want to do, here's the thing. It needs to be literally as simple as that, as simple as that one sentence. Because what follows afterwards is, if I say, my purpose is to change the way that people see themselves in the mirror, what's the th next thing that comes to you to ask me? How do you do that? Exactly. So you need to think about your purpose in terms of relating it down to just that. And it's an invitation for people to say, well, how do you do that? Okay? So as we go forward, that's what I want you to keep in mind, right? So we're taking all these things that we've talked about this morning and we're putting them all together. And we're going to just create a narrative. So 
One of the things I want you to realize is that this is a transformational experience, okay? And I want you to think about how you want transformation in your own life, in your own self-image, right? The thing is, is that we need to stop seeing ourselves as being different than one another, because we're really not. We're actually not so different. And I wanted it to be really the sort of thing that hits you in the gut, right? Because you have these weekends like this, where there's so much information and it comes at you so fast and so hard that you need something to really kind of stick out and stay with you. And I want you to understand that when you change how you see yourself, the entire universe responds, responds to you. So how does that happen? Do you mind if I tell you a couple of stories while I'm painting? Is that, is that okay with you? Hello, is anyone awake out there? <laughs> Do you mind if I tell you a couple of stories while I'm painting? Yes, yes all right, there we go. <laughs> I'm like, I know it's the last stretch before lunch and your stomach's grumbling a little and it's like, oh, please feed me. Um, so, so here's the thing. Um, some of you may or may not know, when you go to watch me on Skin Wars, I am really different from when then to now. Um, some of you have, may have noticed that I've gained an accent since then <laughs> and have been really confused and posting on my Instagram. Where, when, did, when did you get the accent? Where did that come from? Well, I had put all of my financial eggs in the Skin Wars basket. And basically, I was like told by so many different people that I was going to get offered all these big deals from people and I was going to get body paint sponsors and all these amazing things were going to happen and the season came and went and October, which it, w the first of October was when Skin Wars was over, came, nobody called me to hire me. Nobody messaged me, nobody scheduled body paintings, and I mean October is supposed to be your biggest month, right? That's when people are hiring you for parties and, you know, you're doing this whole thing for, um, you know, Halloween parties and your costume ideas, right? It's supposed to be, it was the worst financial month of my life. My money was negative, no one was calling me, not even my regular gigs were calling me and I was really scared because at the time um, I was using an inhaler three times a day and I was on my last 30 puffs on my inhaler um, at the time I was a size 22 pushing a size 24 and um, I was really scared I was going to die uh, without the right medication. So I woke up in the middle of the night, one night in October, that October, and I was reminded that uh, a while ago I had done this thing where I pretended my way out of being sick once before and changed things in my life and it helped me to go to school and I was like, you know what? I don't know how the hell to get out of this thing. So I am going to create a character who knows how to get out of this because I don't know how to do it. And then I'm going to role play her 24-7. You know, uh, a lot of people um, know, uh, have heard of, oop, that's cold, sorry. <laughs> The ribs right down here, it's cold and wet and ticklish. Yeah, it's like, you know, yeah, just breathe through that. Just breathe through that. Right now you're kind of looking like, oh, what was the name of that? Lisa no, no, well, not as, well, Lisa Frank, but uh, no, it was a gum with stripes and a zebra. What? 
No, no, it was it was a gum. The zebra, the zebra gum with the stripes. Fruit strips. I don't know. She looks like a fruit strip. Stripe. Whatever. Anyway, it just. Okay, so I, in case you didn't notice, I have a thing for neon. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, no. Uh, so I decided to play a new character, and I would role play it twenty four seven. And so, when I went down to Florida, I made a little ritual for myself. And since I stay down in Florida in the Florida Keys to um, to do Fantasy Fest and stuff, it was a good time to sort of try it out and put on this new persona. And it was amazing. So I immediately knew that diet sodas were poisonous. And as soon as I did my little ritual walking into the ocean, now mind you, when I did this, my friend is standing on the shore. It's the white sand beach, Siesta Key. It's the most beautiful, one of the most beautiful beaches in the world. And it's nighttime. And she's like, you're not getting me to go in there. There's sharks in there. I'm not going in there. You can go in yourself. So she stood way up on the shore, right? And I was glad that it was night. And I'm glad that the waves were crashing because I was standing in the waves being like, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? What if I go under and I come up and nothing happens, right? And I stood there forever and I couldn't get myself to go under the waves because I was afraid of the sharks. But here's the thing, the sharks weren't real, right? It was just my imagination and all my fears and everything. I was afraid that if I didn't succeed, basically I was going to die. Like that was that was the really terrible part. And... So, I dunked myself down into the waves, and I came back up, and I went, oh, so glad she shut up. <laughs> right? Because she was just flailing, and right? All in the fear, right? Who's ever been in that, right? It's horrible. But here's, here's the good news. <laughs> you have the power to change that. You have the power to decide to do something different. You, you, here's the amazing part. You have all the power. Not anybody else. And it's just a matter of... Sorry, that's another cold, ribby place. Yeah, it's fruit stripes. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Somebody should look that up and be like, look, it's the fruit stripes. <laughs> um, that gum goes bad the fastest. Yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> it's like two There's seconds. Yeah. Bazooka bubble gum goes quicker. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it is fruit stripes, yes. All right. Isn't it fruit stripes, yes. Okay. All right. So um you gotta dry, sorry. So this is called this is the part we call blowing the muddle. It's a little, you know. Anyway. You, you could There we go. <laughs> so anyway, um some really amazing things happened. Immediately I went back to the place that I was staying at, opened up the door, and I was like, Well that was silly of her to buy like two one liter things of diet soda, I mean, that stuff's poison. And I immediately took it out and didn't drink it. Here's the great thing. My migraines went away. I had no idea that the stuff that I'd been drinking was a source of my migraines. And it was amazing. And it happened instantly, and it changed. And next thing is a week later, because I've been doing chalk art festivals, um... Normally, it would take me three, almost four days or more to recover from that to be able to do the next chalk art festival. The next weekend, we were doing a chalk art festival down in Key West. I did the chalk art festival. Do you know how long it took for me to recover physically? One night of good sleep. 
I went from a size 22 pushing a size 24 to a 16 in a month and a half. And I had done stuff before where I had um, measured out all my meals, took one bar, two and a half hours after I ate the noon meal that was the set of counted calories and walked, you know, 10 miles a week, making sure I did my 10,000 steps and all that stuff. And it took me over a year to drop one pant size. What was the thing that was different? I changed how I saw myself and my body followed. It was incredible what my body did. All of a sudden I was doing exercises and I was like, come on, you can do it, right? And, and, but I was motivated, I got up, right? But here's the thing, motivation, who's, who's, who's ever chased motivation? <laughs> right? That sucker, right? Motivation is a red herring. It has nothing to do with motivation. It has something to do with this thing called commitment, right? My commitment was absolute. When I went underneath those waves, I was absolutely committed to that new character who had a complete different relationship to the one that my past personality had. And I changed my life. And here's the thing, whatever it is that you are dealing with in your life, whatever it is that you have in your business, whatever it is you don't have in your business, whatever it is you don't have in your life, I am telling you, you are under no obligation to be the person you were five minutes ago. None. I think Alan Watts said that. There's actually a bunch of different people that, that use that. Um, that are that are motivational people, um, and it's absolutely it's absolutely true because you know we think that it takes time, and what I'm telling you is that it takes an instant. All right, so how many of you kind of got lost in me painting and you f kind of forgot she was topless, <laughs> right? You were, you were lost. You were you're like, what's that next stroke going to be? What is that? I think those are eyes. Who are kind of thinking, like, I think those are eyes, right? Right? And they kind of went away. All right, hold on to that. Um, so there's lots of things that we do in our lives where we get lost in our stories, okay? Who's ever been lost in the story? Not these particular words, I'm a victim. My mom does this to me. My brother does this to me. My husband does this to me. I can't believe my employees called in sick again, right? I really needed them to be there for me. This was an important day. We had an important presentation. My, pu my, my printing guys didn't do the right thing. My, my technical person didn't do the, my computer didn't work right, right? That's what I mean about being a victim, right? That's a story, okay? But some of the best speakers are the ones that are like, well, it looks like the universe has other plans for me today, so I'm just gonna get real with you, right? And so they come forward on the stage and they leave the slides behind and there's a deeper, more authentic connection instead of them being like, look guys, I'm really sorry, I, I, I don't know what happened with this thing and, oh, you know, right? Aren't the ones that are most powerful the, one, uh, the ones that you connect with no matter what else is going on? Or the people that you admire, the ones that are like, I'll have a nervous breakdown later. Right now we need to get shit done. <laughs> 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 right? How many of you, you know, raise your hands if you, yeah, you, you connected with that, right? Yes? Okay, right? So your story, though, is who you want to be in that moment, right? 
You can see there's other people who do well under pressure, right? But here's the thing. You're the one who gets to be in control of your story. So what do you want your story to be? Who do you want to be? Do you realize that all of you are the hero in your story? Every single one of you. Raise your hand if you feel like a hero today. Raise your hand if you want to be the hero every day. Right? You're all freaking Harry Potter. <laughs> You're all Hermione. You're all Wonder Woman. You're all Superman. All of you. You're all Luke Skywalker. <laughs> I did that for you, Daryl. That was for you. Love you, man. Right? But you get to choose that narrative. You get to decide what it's going to be. That's up to you. It's not up to anybody else. And here's the amazing thing. When you are so convinced in your own reality and your own story, right, and you're like, you're one with it, that's your self-image. And what happens is you no longer have to tell people they automatically feel it when you walk into the room. Right? I was telling a story about myself, a nonverbal narrative about the kind of person I was just being up here in the front of the room. Who really connected with my energy because I was up here dancing, making an idiot of myself? <laughs> right? Did it feel good that it looked like I didn't give a shit? Yeah. yeah. Right? Did it feel good? You're like, man, I wish I could go up there and just like, right? I wish I could. That's your story. You don't have to have that story. You can have any narrative that you like. That's your power. So I want you to think carefully about all of these things, right, in terms of like what you're doing here this weekend, right? Take your sentence, whatever it is, I am here to. What are you here to do? Connect people to their authentic self. Um, let's take the hemp oil back there, right? I'm here to make people's lives easier. Right? So you just reduce that to a single sentence. I'm here to make people's lives easier. So it invites the question, well, how do you do that? Right? So these are the types of things that I, I want you to realize or an answer. Who's really getting lost in the artwork now? Who's trying to decide what kind of animal it is? Who thought they knew and then it changed? I want to keep you on your toes. So, some people can look at what I do and be like, well, you have a talent, Mythica, that's easy. You're likable. I was the kid that got beat up in middle school. That was my narrative. I had lots of different stories that weren't exactly very, uh, very conducive. But I, I did have this one time where my dad was really big into being one of those strict fathers that like punished you a lot for stuff, right? Did things like threw all my toys in the garbage. My mom would have to help sneak us out the back where we could sneak our toys back and hide them from him. And other kinds of things where I remember one time that my father told me that I was lower than the lowest 
earthworms in the dirt. But here's the thing. There's a lot of people that could take that narrative and really make a mess of their lives with it. I think I turned out pretty fucking cool. <laughs> right? But that's because I decided how I was going to treat that story. I took my dad, who was brutal with me, verbally, mentally, physically, when we were younger. And I took my mom, who let him, and was sweet and loving, but couldn't do, couldn't or wouldn't do anything to help us. Right? And I said, I don't want to be like either one of you jackasses. I'm going to be my own person. In fact, I remember when my ex-wife went home to meet my parents. Before she did, she was like, oh, my mom's a monster. So her mom is a monster was her narrative. She went home and met my parents who were like, okay, you guys can't be gay in front of our friends at this party or we're going to send everybody home and you can't see any of them. My girlfriend, my, my, my at the time fiance, um, went into the bathroom and cried for the whole party. Because otherwise I, would, I didn't have the, you know, it was, didn't have the means, it didn't have Facebook at the time, you understand. So I didn't have the way to be able to connect with them unless my parents allowed me to. Um, so it was really, really difficult. And after meeting my parents, she went home to her parents and went, oh my God, I love you guys. You guys are so awesome. You love me, you accept me. Like, right, her entire narrative changed after meeting my parents. And then the other thing she did is, I don't know how you turned out so good, <laughs> right? But that's because that's what happens when you change the narrative. How many of you have narratives in your life that you, that you would like to change? Raise your hand. How many of you would like to change your narrative to money? How you feel? If you're a millionaire, quadrillionaire, and you have all the money you need, raise your hand. Right? Not quite, right? I said that one just for you, Dan. <laughs> Smart Alec, <laughs> right? How many of you would like a relationship with money like it is your lover and it showers you daily? <laughs> Raise your hand, right? You want that narrative, yes? Right? So create somebody who creates so much value that you are JK Rowling and you create a story about a boy even though you're a single mom and all you have is your imagination and your creativity and your emotions and how you feel and you pour it into a character that people connect with so well that you become the single most richest female in the entire world. Change your narrative. She changed her narrative, do you understand? So that's how you change your narrative, right? That's how you change your self-value, your self-worth. Nobody can tell you who to be, right? Well, they can tell you. They actually do tell you all day, every day, right? Don't they? But what would you rather be? What other people tell you? Or what you want to be? What you desire? That wasn't a rhetorical question. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do want you to answer that. What do you want to be? Huh? What was that? Who I am as bigger. Who you are and bigger. Who else? A person filled with joy. A person filled with joy. I like that. Who wants to be happy? Yeah. Right? Who wants to be happier? All right, take some of that. Yes. So, when you change your the way that you view yourself and you decide you're not going to let other people decide that for you. 
then you can do whatever you want, right? But here's the thing that gets kind of crazy. Who gets overwhelmed by the idea of they can be anything and they get lost in all the choices, right? There's some people that get lost in the choices. You can be anything. What do you want to be? Right? And sometimes it takes a little digging and asking those questions like Anastasia said, right? So you're stuck in a room and somebody keeps asking questions until you narrow that down, right? Some people get stuck in the possibility of I can be anything and they go like this. Ah, oh, I have no idea. So um, I'm writing a book called The Power of Pretend. Um, and in that book, I have a really awesome game called The Opposite Game. How many people can tell you what they hate? I don't want to ever experience this again. Who doesn't want to ever experience a boss that treats them like crap again? Right? Who wants to be, who never wants to be in a relationship where they're abused ever again, whether it's in the office or anything else? Okay? So then you take that and you reverse it and you start to find what you really do want in your life. Right? You can take the things of, I never want to experience this again, and turn it around, and then you start to find your narrative of what you do want and how you can be. Ha, huh, I fooled you. It's a tiger dragon. So who says it has to be something that you do know? Who says that it has to be something you do recognize? Who says it has to be anything that has been recognized before, has been created before? It can be anything. I can make anything up here. Right? Can somebody tell me the time, please, since I can't really look? All right, so we're getting towards the end here. So let me tell you about the magic of what I'm actually doing up here that you're going to get to see, right? We talked about the power of vulnerability and doing this thing that we're doing up here. So, a couple of things are going to happen, and it doesn't matter that I'm talking about these in front of Chessa. Okay? Chessa is going to see herself for the very first time. You have actually been getting to watch the process of what's happening to Chessa, right? You've been lost in the details of the painting. It's been fun to watch it evolve. It's been fun trying to, to guess what it is. All these different things. But here's the power of body painting and what I do and how I change people's views of themselves, right? There's a lot of people that talk about concepts when, when we're in therapy sessions. There's a lot of people that talk about different concepts of changing your mind and all of these different things, right? I'm also a certified hypnotherapist too, so I can tell you that it, it takes a lot to work all that subconscious programming that you've had for all your life. But I'm going to show you how in one second that will completely change. Because here's the beauty of what I'm doing. Art is an amazing, healing, wonderful thing that we, we need artists in our lives. We need people who are creative because their brains do something that, that most of the rest of us, like, we're like, how did she even come up with that thing? You know, right? And what happens is, I'm going to tell you, and it's not going to matter at all that I'm saying it. The art is going to overwhelm her senses. You cannot look at artwork because your brain is hardwired to take in information. So when that art is shown to her, she cannot project her self-loathing and hatred at the same time she's taking the art in, right? You can't hold love 
and you can't hold other negative emotions at the same time, one of the others got to win, right? The beauty about artwork is that our brains are hardwired to take in information. And so Chessa is going to actually see herself as beautiful. She's, she's going to realize it on a visceral level, do you understand? And you're going to get to watch that. And so what I'm saying is that now for our body expert in the back, watch, watch what happens to her posture, right? Just look how excited she is, right? But all of you can look at that, right? A million things are going to happen all at the same time for her. Now, at the beginning, you know, she was really scared and vulnerable. How many of you were mortified for her? Like you were like, oh my God, if that was me up there, I'd be like, right? Or I could, or, or I could never do what she's doing. How, how many of you thought I could never do what she's doing? Okay. Yes, but how many of you see her as being courageous? How many of you wish you were as courageous as she is? Raise your hand. I don't feel courageous. <laughs> I feel terrified, like you in the ocean. I don't want to dunk my head over. <laughs> I'm like, ah. Oh. Right? But see, here's what's going to happen. Like dunking your head in, in under the ocean. When I take that mirror and turn it around, you're going to wonder why that that person you used to be a few seconds ago, you're going to see it. It'll just happen. There won't be any time to mentally process it because all the artwork is just lighting up your brain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. Does that make sense to you? Okay. I need more water. So, If any of you are interested in having one of these life-changing body painting rewire your brain experiences, you know, I'll be here all weekend. Come talk to me. If any of you are interested in the journey that I talked to about the power of pretend and how to rewrite your, your character, your being, who you want to be, um, I am going to be writing, um, I'm actually in the second edit of my book and next year, you want to write this down, September 18th through the 21st, 2018, I will be doing a retreat where we will do the whole thing from top to bottom. Okay, so if you're interested. And then I also have, um, let's see. Love, could you do me a favor and help pass these out for me? Sure. Thank you. Um, you know, there's lots of different things that I do, and but here's the main thing. I think all of you are divine beings who've just forgotten. That's all. That's it. It's really simple, right? You're this incredible being that forgot that this is this. That's all it is. You're identifying your soul with the same thing as the clothing that you're wearing. You're more than your clothing. You're this incredible spiritual being having a human experience. How are you feeling right now, Chessa? Terrified. You're terrified? <laughs> Yes, yes I am. But you know, everything's better with glitter. <laughs> Everything is better with glitter, right? This is my favorite part. It, it is cold though, sorry. <laughs> okay.
Okay, come stand over here. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to do it, yes. Remember, I told you it doesn't matter that we talked about it, right? You're just going to see it. Close your eyes. How many of you wish you were her right now? That she could have, you could have that. Do you see how that, all that story, all that narrative, it just all went away. Do you understand? How fast can you change? Yeah. What do you see, Chessa? But into the microphone, they can't hear you. It's okay, it's okay. Breathe, you're not breathing. Here we go. I, I just finally see that I don't have to beat myself up if I don't want to, and that, that I really am beautiful and that I guess I finally see what everyone else has been telling me that they have seen this whole time. They don't kind of feel like liars anymore, do they? No, they, they don't feel like liars and I don't feel like I have to be anyone else but me. So that's... Can I have a round of applause for Chessa? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, if you want some really life-altering, mind-blowing experiences in your life, come see me. <laughs> Please, could we all rise for Mythica? Get on your feet. Thank you. So before we go to lunch, I want to talk to you a little bit. Okay. Because um, when I, so for years and years and years, when people would ask me, well, you know, who is Daryl Stern? Like, what, you know, tell me something about you. I would say, well, I'm divorced and my mom died of cancer. That's what I would say. And it took me a long time to realize that that wasn't me. And there was a long time that I was, uh, as I grew up, that I was really always uh, embarrassed and ashamed, so... You are a good friend of mine, and thank you so much You're for helping me out so much. Now, I want to talk about something else. So, um, so Mythica has been doing this body painting in, in clubs, in nightclubs, at parties, and all of that. And it was about two, three years ago that we met up, and I said, I want to do a little of this stern storming, which you guys are going to experience this afternoon. And we started talking about, well, what happens when the women that you paint, what happens to them? And you just uh, witness that transformation. I said, well then, what's the polar opposite of that? Right? Well, as you saw, what she said about herself and what she felt about herself. Right? So, to bring people to Mythica to have this experience, we go out and we ask people in the world if they're in this type of pain. Now there's lots of different ways that Mythica can heal people. There's lots of different things that Mythica can do with her talents. But that is what we're going to do this afternoon, and it's called Eden Bound Marketing.